Hi there, thanks for taking the time to view this workshop on stress management. I hope you gain some knowledge from this presentation and can implement it into your own life. There are some stresses, like the loss of a loved one, that are unavoidable, and others that you can prevent or influence. The trick is in learning how to distinguish between the two so that you're not constantly frustrated and devote your time and talent to areas where you can make a difference. While everyone experiences stress at times, a prolonged bout of it can affect your health and ability to cope with life. That's why social support and self-care are important. They can help you see your problems in perspective and the stressful feelings ease up. Sometimes stress can be good. For instance, it can help you develop skills needed to manage potentially threatening situations in life. However, stress can be harmful when it is severe enough to make you feel overwhelmed and out of control. Strong emotions like fear, sadness, or other symptoms of depression are normal, as long as they are temporary and don't interfere with daily activities. If these emotions last too long or cause other problems, then it's a different story. Surveys show that most Americans experience challenges with stress at some point during the year. In looking at the causes of stress, remember that your brain comes hardwired with an alarm system for your protection. When your brain perceives a threat, it signals your body to release a burst of hormones to fuel your capacity for a response. This has been labeled the fight or flight response. Once the threat is gone, your body is meant to return to a normal relaxed state. Unfortunately, the nonstop stress of modern life means that your alarm system rarely shuts off. So that's why stress management is so important. Stress management gives you a range of tools to reset your alarm system. Without stress management, all too often your body is always on high alert. And then over time, high levels of stress lead to serious health problems. Don't wait until stress has a negative impact on your health, relationships, or quality of life. Start practicing a range of stress management techniques today. Here are some common symptoms of stress. You can feel shock, tension, you're irritable, you're numb to other people's feelings, you kind of have a loss of interest in things, uh, there's maybe some anger, increased use of drugs or alcohol, you have trouble concentrating. There are lots of things that stress looks like in our day-to-day -day life. So what can you do about stress? The good thing is that you can learn ways to manage stress. To get stress under control, find out what is causing the stress in your life, Look for ways to reduce the amount of stress in your life. Learn healthy ways to relieve stress or reduce its harmful effects. So how do you measure your stress level? Sometimes it's very clear where stress is coming from. You can count on stress during a major life change, such as the death of a loved one, getting married, or having a baby. But other times, it may not be so clear as to why you feel stressed. It's important to figure out what causes stress for you. Everybody feels and responds to stress differently. Keeping a stress journal might help, Get a notebook, write down when something makes you feel stressed out. Then write how you reacted and what you did to deal with it. By keeping this journal, you can find out what's causing your stress and how much of it you feel. Then you can take steps to reduce the stress or you'll be better prepared to handle it. You can do a stress assessment. You should have the Holmes and Rahi stress scale. What you do is you're gonna circle the number of life change units that apply to events in the past year of your life. Then add up all the circled points, and the final score will give you a rough estimate of how stress is affecting your health. Now we're going to talk about the four A's. When we feel the effects of stress weighing us down, it's like lugging a backpack that's becoming heavier by the minute. Too much stress can make our journey through life difficult. Heavy events like a wedding, as well as unhappy events like being overworked, can cause stress. When your stress level exceeds your ability to cope, you need to restore the balance by reducing the stressors or increasing your ability to cope or both. Try using one of the four A's, avoid, alter, accept, or adapt. The first A is void. Believe it or not, you can simply avoid a lot of stress. Plan ahead, rearrange your surroundings, and reap the benefits of a lighter load. Take control of your surroundings. Is the traffic insane? You could try leaving early for work or take a longer, less traveled route. Do you hate to wait in line if there's a cafeteria where you work? Pack your lunch and eat at your desk. Avoid people who bother you. If you have a coworker who causes your jaw to tense, put physical distance between the two of you. Sit far away at meetings or walk around their cubicle or their work area, even if it requires a few extra steps. Learn to say no. You have a lot of responsibilities and demands on your time. At a certain point, you cross the line between being charitable and being kind of foolish. Turn down the neighborhood sports league. Pass on coaching t-ball. Those around you will appreciate more time with a relaxed you. Worry and stress often result from our resistance to use that simple two-letter word, no. 
The yes leads to overcommitting, overpromising, and sometimes even compromising our own sets of values and priorities. Being able to set boundaries and protect your time, talents, and energy can work big miracles. It serves to set limits, it can remove projects and activities that serve no real purpose, and it can keep persistent people from monopolizing your time. Most people will appreciate the honesty in a statement such as, I need to pass on this, my plate is full, and I don't have the time for it right now. Ditch part of your list. Label your to-do list with A's, B's, and C's according to importance. On hectic days, just scratch the C's from your list. However, some problems can't be avoided. For those situations, let's try another technique. Alter. One of the most helpful things you can do during times of stress is to take inventory, then attempt to change your situation for the better. Respectfully ask others to change their behavior. And be willing to do the same. Small problems often create larger ones if they aren't resolved. If you're tired of being the butt of your wife's jokes at parties, ask her to leave you out of the comedy routine. In return, be willing to enjoy her other jokes and thank her for humoring you. Communicate your feelings openly. Remember to use I statements, as in, I feel frustrated by shorter deadlines and a heavier workload. Is there something we can do to balance things out? Manage your time better. Lump together similar tasks. Group your phone calls, car errands, and computer-related tasks. The reward of increased efficiency will be extra time. Set priorities. Worry arises because we have unrealistic expectations about what we can do or we have no sense of priority. You need to have a realistic set of expectations. When you schedule five hours of meetings, five hours of tasks, four hours of housework, and four hours of TV and recreational time, that leaves six hours to sleep. And that is only if the tasks take the amount of time you allotted. And things usually take more time. This means that you're always running behind. You can stop this form of self-sabotage by asking some questions. What's top priority for today? And then what's the worst that could happen if this didn't get done? If I could only get three things done today, what would I choose them to be? What activities are most in line with my purpose and values? This can help us to see the forest through the trees. Work hard. Worry and stress is often a signal to do something. Worry arises when there are deadlines and things that are building up, like the laundry. That means time to get it done. Sometimes all the stress management strategies in the world are no substitute for seeing a task to completion. Work can be healing in and of itself. Yes, the activity gives us something new to think about and helps us to feel in control. When you start crossing items off your to-do list, you'll feel a sense of accomplishment and that you're getting somewhere. You're moving forward. State your limits in advance. Instead of stewing over a colleague's nonstop chatter, politely start the conversation with, I've only got five minutes to cover this and rehearse success. Instead of imagining how badly things might turn out, take a few minutes to mentally rehearse success. Picture yourself sailing through first dates, family events, evaluations, or anything that you typically dread. Hear yourself performing well at presentations or during meetings. Feel what it would be like to overcome obstacles, accomplish goals, and resolve conflict. Anticipating success can increase the chance that it'll happen. It can increase your confidence and decrease your worry and then set up an expectation that things will turn out well. Accept. Sometimes we have no choice but to just accept things the way that they are. When this happens, try to talk with someone. You might not be able to change the frustrating situation, but that doesn't mean your feelings aren't legitimate. Phone or schedule a coffee break with an understanding friend. You'll feel better after you talk it out. Forgive. It takes a lot of energy to be angry. Forgiving may take practice, but by doing so, you'll free yourself from burning more negative energy. Why stew in your anger when you could shrug it off and move on? Practice positive self-talk. It's easy to lose objectivity when you're stressed. One negative thought can lead to another, and soon you've created a mental avalanche. Be positive. Instead of thinking, I am horrible with money and I will never be able to control my finances, try this. I've made some mistakes with my money, but I'm resilient. I'll get through it learn from your mistakes. There is value in recognizing a teachable moment. You can't change the fact that procrastination hurt your performance, but you can make sure you a lot more time in the future. Adapt. Thinking you can't cope is one of the greatest stressors. That's why adapting, which often involves changing your standards or expectations, can be most helpful in dealing with stress. So to adapt, you've got to adjust your standards. Do you need to vacuum and dust twice a week? Would macaroni and cheese be an unthinkable substitute for homemade lasagna? Redefine success and stop striving for perfection, and you may operate with a little less guilt and frustration. Imagine the worst, 
and be okay with it. If your mind wants to imagine the worst, then let it. The trick is to be sure you take this line of thought to the absurd extreme. Example, if I don't get this job, I'll run out of money, then I'll have to live with my parents and everyone will laugh at me and my parents will kick me out, then I'll be homeless and I'll live in a cardboard box. Once you imagine the very worst, you can backtrack and usually find a realistic scenario. From there, you can start to devise workable plans to manage your current reality and solve the problem. When you find a reasonable level of concern, you can state the problem objectively and see new solutions. Practice thought stopping. Stop gloomy thoughts immediately. Refuse to replay a stressful situation as negative, and it may cease to be negative. Reframe the issue. Try looking at your situation from a new viewpoint. Instead of feeling frustrated that you're home with a sick kid, look as an opportunity to bond, relax, finish some laundry. Change your perspective. When you are filled with worry, dread, or anxiety, zoom out in your mind's eye. Imagine that you're floating away and viewing a stressful situation as a detached outside observer above the scene. From this larger viewpoint, ask yourself whether the situation is worth worrying about. Give yourself permission to gain some perspective. Another option is to zoom out in time. Imagine yourself in one week, a month, or even a year later, and ask how much the current situation will matter to you then. What we typically find is what worries today will really not matter much next week. Adopt a mantra. Create a saying such as, I can handle this, and mentally repeat it in tough situations. Create an assets column. Imagine all the things that bring you joy in your life. Vacation, children, pets. Then call on that list when you're stressed. It will put things into perspective and serve as a reminder of life's joys. Look at the big picture. Ask yourself, will this matter in a year or five years? A lot of times the answer is no. When you realize this, it can make a stressful situation seem a lot less overwhelming. Choosing the right technique. Stressors, good and bad, are a part of everyday life. Practice applying these four A's to balance your stress equation. With practice, that once hefty backpack will become your private bag of tricks. Soon, you'll be able to pull out just the right tool that will keep you hiking through life at a steady clip. Some of the best ways to manage stress in hard times are through self-care. Avoid drugs and alcohol. They may seem like a temporary fix to feel better, but in the long run, they can create more problems and add to your stress instead of take it away. Find support. Seek help from a partner, family member, friend, counselor, doctor, or clergy person. Having a sympathetic listening ear and sharing about your problems and stress really can lighten the burden. Connect socially. After a stressful event, it's really easy to isolate yourself. Make sure that you are spending time with loved ones. Consider planning fun activities with your partner, children, or friends. Take care of yourself. Eat a healthy, well-balanced diet. Exercise regularly. Get as much sleep as you can. And give yourself a break when you feel stressed out. For example, you could go get a massage. And then try and maintain a normal routine. Here are some tips for self-care. Stay active. You can take your mind off your problems by giving. Help a neighbor, volunteer in the community, or even take your own dog on a long walk. These can be positive ways to channel your feelings. You can exercise. Regular exercise is one of the best ways to manage stress. Walking is a great way to get started. Write. It can help to write about the things that are bothering you. Writing is a great way to slow down your thoughts. This is because the hand is slower than the mind, so putting your thoughts on paper slows them down. Writing is also a way to gain some perspective. When your thoughts are in front of you, on a piece of paper, they're often a lot less stressful. Do something you enjoy. A hobby can help you relax. Or volunteer work that helps others can be a great stress reliever. Learn ways to relax your body. This can include breathing exercises, muscle relaxation exercises, massage, aromatherapy, yoga, or relaxing exercises like Tai Chi. Let your feelings out. Talk, laugh, cry, and express your anger when you need to with someone you trust. Focus on the present. Try meditation, imagery exercises, or self-hypnosis. Listen to relaxing music. Try to look for the humor in life. Laughter really can be the best medicine. Instead of worrying now, put it off. Schedule a time to worry later and tell yourself that you'll get around to it if you feel like it when the time comes. You can even set a block of time on your schedule for worrying like one hour on Fridays after work. This gives you permission to enjoy some peace of mind until your worry time comes around.
what happens is that people discover that most of the time, the things we worry about never come to pass. By postponing worry, we save ourselves needless mental wear and tear, and we usually forget what we were so worried about in the first place. Focus on the outside world. It's easy to live in our minds trying to figure out why we feel the way we do. We can get so focused on ourselves that we become self-centered, forgetting that the outside world even exists. So instead of endlessly probing your own mind, take an active interest in the world around you. This means shifting your attention from what am I feeling to what needs doing. Asking the latter question might lead you to organizing your desk, apologizing to a family member, finishing a project, or doing volunteer work. Even simple shifts of attention, like noticing the colors in a room or the sounds on a nearby street, can lower your stress level. When it comes to relieving stress, more giggles and guffaws are just what the doctor ordered. Here's why. Whether you're guilty of guffawing at an episode of South Park or quietly giggling at a cartoon in the Sunday paper, laughing does you good. Laughter is a great form of stress relief, and that's no joke. Stress relief from laughter. A good sense of humor can't cure all ailments, but data are mounting about the positive things laughter can do. Short-term benefits. A good laugh has some great short-term effects. When you start to laugh, it doesn't just lighten your load mentally, it can actually induce physical changes in your body. Laughter can stimulate many organs, it can enhance your intake of oxygen-rich air, stimulate your heart, lungs, and muscles, and it increases the endorphins that are released by your brain. It can activate and relieve your stress response. A rollicking laugh fires up and then cools down your stress response and increases your heart rate and blood pressure. The result? A good relaxed feeling and soothe tension. Laughter can also simulate circulation and aid muscle relaxation, both of which help reduce some of the physical symptoms of stress. Long-term effects. Laughter isn't just a quick pick-me-up though. It's also good for you over the long haul. Laughter may improve your immune system. Negative thoughts manifest into chemical reactions that can affect your body by bringing more stress into your system and decreasing your immunity. In contrast, positive thoughts actually release neuropeptides that help fight stress and potentially more serious illnesses. Laughter may ease pain by causing the body to produce its own natural painkillers. Laughter may also break the pain spasm cycle common to some muscle disorders. It can increase your personal satisfaction. Laughter can also make it easier to cope with difficult situations, and it helps you connect with other people and improve your mood. Many people experience depression, sometimes due to chronic illnesses. Laughter can help lessen your depression and anxiety and make you feel happier. So, improve your sense of humor. Are you afraid that you have an underdeveloped or non-existent funny bone? Not a problem. Humor can be learned. In fact, developing or refining your sense of humor may be easier than you think. Put humor on your horizon. Find a few simple items, such as photos or comic strips, that make you chuckle and hang them up in your home or office. Keep funny movies or comedy albums on hand when you need an added humor boost. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Find a way to laugh about your own situations and watch your stress begin to fade away. Even if it feels kind of forced at first, practice laughing. It does your body good. Share a laugh. Make it a habit to spend time with friends who make you laugh. And then return the favor by sharing funny stories or jokes with those around you. Browse through your local bookstore or library selection of joke books and get a few rib ticklers in your repertoire that you can share with your friends. Know what's not funny. Don't laugh at the expense of others. Some forms of humor are not appropriate. Use your best judgment to discern a good joke from a bad or hurtful one. Laughter is the best medicine. Go ahead and give it a try. Turn the corners of your mouth up into a smile and then give a laugh, even if it feels a little forced. Once you've had your chuckle, take stock of how you're feeling. Are your muscles a little less tense? Do you feel more relaxed or buoyant? That's the natural wonder of laughing while at work. When problems overwhelm you, it's temptingly easy to nail someone else with the blame. It makes Jean-Paul Sartre seem right when he famously said, hell is other people. If only those people would get it together, you'd be happy as the happiest clam. Not true. Stress is not other people. Stress, the crazy fast heartbeat, the panicky rage, the mental paralysis, the snapping, and the crying, and the worrying is your response to all the good and the bad and the just plain inconvenient people and things that happen to you. 
Research has shown that the way you think about and perceive the world around you has far more to do with how you respond to stress over and above the lazy coworker, the spouse who can't read your mind, the driver that cut you off, you name it. In this case, it's an externalizing trap, the tendency to blame others or circumstances when things go wrong. Here's what externalizing sounds like. I know it's her fault. She's always messing things up for me. If he hadn't taken so many sick days, I wouldn't have missed my deadline. The way he gets the kids to bed so late drives me so crazy I could scream. This traffic has me so rattled and I know I'm going to ruin my client meeting. Any of those sound familiar? These thoughts are the real enemy. They're the reason you're more stressed than you need to be. Blaming other people for your stress can make it seem as if when you cast off responsibility, then stress will follow suit. But the problem is it just keeps coming back. Chop off one head for stressing you out and three more people or situations will rise up in its place and you're still stuck thinking it's all everyone else's fault. A recent survey by health insurer Aetna revealed that just under a quarter of people surveyed had lashed out at others as a result of their stress. And again, some common major stressors that were reported in this study were driving, work, extended family, and romantic relationships. So change it up and start being accountable. Shifting this painful habit of thought starts with you. Calm your stress by owning up to the part you play in it. So it's known as accountability. Being accountable for your actions won't add to your stress. It's actually the opposite. It's a relief. There's a certain learned helplessness that comes from blaming other people all the time. And the sooner you practice being accountable, the faster you see that you have some control over what you do and why. When you're taking responsibility for your response to stress, you have the power to change it. So here's how. Catch yourself. The moment you feel yourself start to point fingers in a moment of stress, pause for a sec. What thought is driving you to do that? What are you really afraid of? See it from above. Imagine separating yourself from what happened. Visualize it as if you're seeing it from above as objectively as you can. What were the contributing factors to this stressful situation? Maybe the report was late, not just because your coworker didn't give it to you, but because she didn't have the support to cover her other needs. Understand your role. While you don't fix the situation by blaming someone else entirely, you don't address it by shouldering all the blame either. When you can acknowledge what your role was, you can think about how to address the underlying issue. If your child leaves his books at school again, it may be that he's forgetful, certainly, but also because you haven't helped create a system or habit to help him learn to bring them home. Own up. One of the reasons we have chronic stress is because the same issues come up again and again. Keep a difficult situation from repeating itself, or getting worse, by owning up to your role. Rather than exacerbate tensions by tussling over who did what to whom, approach the situation with an open mind and integrity. When you're less worried about protecting your ego than you are in improving the situation, you'll find yourself on far friendlier ground. And here's a quote that I think is appropriate for this situation. It says, grant me the courage to change the things I can change, the serenity to accept the things I can't change, and the wisdom to know the difference. As if there wasn't enough in our lives to stress us out already, nutritionists say that what we're eating is only stressing our bodies out further. The irony is we're often eating to relieve stress. In the digital age, we've mostly accepted stress as a part of life rather than acknowledging it as an occasional inconvenience. It's constant and it's putting us on edge, whether we realize it or not. Stress isn't just wreaking havoc on our everyday mental well-being. It can also lead to weight gain, high blood pressure, and lowered productivity. What we choose to fuel our bodies with daily is so important for every aspect of our lives. I always tell my patients the one thing you have control over, regardless of what is happening around you, is what you eat. Choose smartly, said nutritionist and dietitian Carrie Gans. Here are five foods that could be stressing you out. Step away from coffee. While guzzling a piping hot cup of coffee might seem like a good idea first thing in the morning, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Large amounts of caffeine, whether you're drinking coffee or energy drinks, can actually cause anxiety and loss of concentration. Plus, if you're caffeine sensitive, the resulting jitters will reduce your productivity, which creates stress. Stick to 16 ounces or less if you must. Also, consider trying black tea, which is loaded with antioxidants and contains less sugar than soft drinks, so you're less likely to crash after the initial surge of energy. 
However, in moderation, caffeine can increase alertness, performance, productivity, and may have some health benefits. Too much, however, can overstimulate the nervous system and bring about restlessness, irritability, and insomnia. Based on current evidence, the U.S. Beverage Guidance Panel suggests that moderate caffeine intake up to 400 milligrams a day is safe for healthy adults and is not associated with an increased risk of heart disease, hypertension, osteoporosis, or high cholesterol. Discuss your daily caffeine intake plan with your doctor as it relates to your own medical conditions and tolerance. Lay off the salt. Peek at a lot of people's lunches and you'll find things like deli meats, cheeses, and several condiments in sandwiches. A sandwich may seem healthy, but these ingredients are loaded with sodium, which can lead to high blood pressure. Stress already leads to hypertension, so do yourself a favor and don't make matters worse. Avoid the vending machine. A mid-afternoon sweet treat may seem like it will get you through the last few hours of the workday, but the boost you're going to get is only going to be temporary. Most junk foods like candy and cookies are full of simple carbohydrates that cause a spike in blood sugar, followed by a crash that makes you feel sluggish and tired. Opt for snacks that provide more protein, fiber, vitamins, and minerals that help regulate stress. Try combinations like carrots and hummus or peanut butter and apples. Kick the fried foods. Fatty foods contribute to hypertension just as much as stress alone. Fatty meals worsen the effects of stress on the heart, and people often forget that fried foods aren't the only foods that are high in fat. Less obvious fatty foods include many rich dairy products like cheese and ice cream. Cut back on the booze. Too much alcohol isn't just bad for your liver and your looks. A hangover can quash your productivity at work, meaning you'll have extra work to catch up on after you're done drinking your Sprite. Alcohol increases cortisol, the stress hormone, which can lead to stress and weight gain too. So stick to a club soda or a mocktail. Here's what we need to start doing differently now in order to manage stress in the future. Create a culture that promotes stress management. This could be achieved by promoting activities like napping at work, getting seven to eight hours of sleep at night, taking meditation breaks, walking during lunch and standing at your desk instead of sitting, engaging in chair yoga during breaks, having fun at work, the list goes on. Some of this sounds far-fetched right now, but it may not be in the future. Manage the mindset that says, I don't have time to manage stress. We spend our days putting out fires and tending to urgent matters that seem more important than managing our stress. But the less we manage our stress, the more scattered and inefficient we become. In order to manage this mindset, we need to set aside time to do the important things like exercising, meditation, reading, connecting with friends and loved ones every day. We need to stick to the schedule no matter how many other urgent matters seem like they may be more pressing. Manage your stress while it's happening. This means managing your stress on the fly and with no time taken out of your busy schedule either. The two best techniques for doing this are cognitive restructuring and mindfulness. Cognitive restructuring teaches you how to recognize your irrational thinking, aka negative self-talk, which causes you boatloads of stress, and teaches you how to change it. Mindfulness teaches you how to find refuge in the present moment and thus liberate you from lots of anxiety, like future-oriented thinking, and lots of anger like holding on to events that happened in the past. Train doctors to recognize and treat stress-related illness and allow health practitioners to spread the word. Doctors need to receive more training in medical school on how to treat stress-related illness and be able to prescribe alternative solutions other than the pharmaceutical solutions that are usually offered. Health practitioners like therapists and nurses need to learn how to teach stress management to their patients. Make the message of stress management simpler. Think of a bridge. The strength of a bridge determines how much load it can bear. The load is referred to as stress. The stronger the bridge, the more stress it can take without buckling under the strain. In order to avoid strain, we can either lighten our load or strengthen our bridge by learning coping strategies that make us stronger. Stress science needs to include new brain science. Stress management has always been about maintaining an internal locus of control, aka feeling like you are in the driver's seat of your own life. We now know that our locus of control may actually reside in the prefrontal cortex of the brain. Knowing how to access and nurture the prefrontal cortex ultimately leads to greater control over our emotions, our fears, and our stress. Make stress management proactive. We need to elevate stress management practices like exercise, yoga, and meditation to the same status as brushing your teeth or taking a shower. It doesn't take any willpower to brush your teeth or take a shower every morning. You just do it. In the future, the same will be true of stress management. Acknowledge stress sensitivity. Some people are wired differently. The best way to deal with a wiring problem is by rewiring. 
You rewire your brain through affirmations, skill building, and habit formation. In addition, meditation practice can facilitate the whole process and literally change the structure of your brain. Embrace the European model. In Europe, the employer takes responsibility for the stress levels of its employees and makes an effort to both lower these levels and teach employees better methods for coping with the stress that can't be lowered by changing certain aspects of the job itself. By the way, in Europe, the average worker takes about five weeks of vacation annually. In the U.S., it's about a week. Address the underlying sources of stress in your life, like time pressure, relationship problems, disorganization, and financial stress. In order to address time pressure, build extra time for things that go wrong or that take longer than you think. For relationship problems, spend time every day connecting with the most important people in your life. In order to address disorganization, set aside time every day for planning and getting organized. In order to address financial stress, resolve to eliminate debt and put aside savings for a rainy day. Addressing these major underlying causes of stress will bring about a growing sense of inner peace that is quite simply more valuable than gold. Living a hectic, deadline-driven, high-octane life is not a requirement for living in the 21st century. It's an option. We don't have to continue these stressful working habits that we've learned from our parents and our over-caffeinated peers, and also from a culture that values material goods and profits way more than it values resilience, inner peace, and personal growth. In order to survive the expansion and exponential growth of the age we live in, we can and must adopt new strategies, like the ones mentioned earlier, to help us change ourselves, our habits, our working conditions, and ultimately the stressed out world that causes us to be this way. Thanks for listening to this presentation today. Here are some references that you can refer to for more information on stress management. If you have any questions or want to talk further about stress management, feel free to contact me, Ashley Wheats, your participant coach. Have a great rest of your day, and thanks again for listening.